The National Fire Protection Association, commonly referred to as the NFPA, is an international nonprofit organization devoted to eliminating death, injury, property, and economic loss due to fire, electrical, and related hazards. The NFPA Code 99 regulates hospitals and healthcare facilities' electrical systems. Isolated Power Specialists produced and distributes this training video to help hospitals and healthcare facilities to stay compliant with the NFPA code requirements. From time to time, we will be referring to the NFPA codebook. When we do, the code will be displayed with the NFPA codebook in the upper left corner. Now to our first discussion, conventional power. Conventional power is the type of a power system that you would find in an office, a supermarket, or in your own home. To people who are not familiar with electrical circuits, these electrical circuits may appear complex, but just keep two things in mind. One, electricity is very determined, and two, it's very lazy. It's very determined because when electrical currents leave the line, it will go anywhere it can to get back to neutral. And it's very lazy because it will take any path of least resistance to get back to neutral. This diagram shows the schematic of a conventional grounded system. The neutral of the transformer is bonded to ground, which, if adequately sized, would provide equal potential bond between the neutral and ground conductors. As the diagram shows, normally we would expect zero volts from ground to neutral and 120 volts from the line conductor to either ground or neutral. Now we want to calculate the amount of current going through the light bulb. To do this, we use Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So the voltage is shown here as 120 volts. And the resistance is equal to 1,000 ohms. Plugging those values into our equation, current equals voltage divided by resistance, or 120 volts divided by 1,000 ohms would equal 120 milliamps. This is important. If we assume that a person has a body resistance of 1,000 ohms and comes into contact with a live conductor, we can expect the result as shown in the equivalent circuit. A current of 120 milliamps would flow from the line conductor via the 1,000 ohm person and return to the neutral via the very low impedance neutral ground connection. This 120 milliamps could prove extremely dangerous for our 1,000 ohm person. Should our person have a reduced ohmic resistance due to excessive moisture or internal body connections, we could expect potentially lethal current to flow. That's a conventional grounded system. So how is an isolated power system different? Primarily, there is no connection to earth ground, bonded or otherwise. It is so important to keep earth ground out of the system that we need to monitor it around the clock. And if it should start to creep in, we need to know about it as soon as possible. Let's look at the components of the isolated power system. Let's build an isolation power panel. First, we need an approved electrical cabinet. The isolated transformer has primary windings and secondary windings. Now we'll add dual circuit breakers to distribute the power. Perhaps we'll add some hospital grade receptacles. And of course, 
we need the Century 5 line isolation monitor to let us know when the leakage to earth ground has exceeded its set point. Now that the components are installed, let's wire it up. We'll finish our isolation power panel by installing the cover. NFPA 99 3.3.155 says the ground bus of the panel board or isolated power system panel supplying the patient care area. This is earth ground. All equipment receptacles reference to this point and new operating rooms must be within 0.1 ohm to this reference ground. This means the panel board that has the isolation transformer in it is grounded to earth ground. NFPA 99 3.3.90 says, primary and secondary windings are physically separated that inductively couples its ungrounded secondary winding to the grounded feeder system that energizes its primary windings. Simply put, located in the isolation transformer are the primary and secondary windings. The primary windings are not referenced to secondary windings. They don't touch each other, nor are the secondary windings referenced to earth ground. The second component is defined in the NFPA 99 codebook in section 3.3.97. It says, a test instrument designed to continually check the balance and unbalanced impedance from each line of the isolated circuit to ground and equipped with a built-in test circuit to exercise the alarm without adding to the leakage current hazard. Okay, so we need a test instrument to let us know if any earth ground is starting to creep into the system. That test instrument is called a line isolation monitor or LIM. Isolated power specialist markets a test instrument or line isolation monitor called the Century 5. In this diagram, you can see that it's attached to both X1 and X2 so that it is continually checking both sides for any connection to earth ground. And if it should sense some leakage starting to creep in, it will alarm when it reaches a preset threshold. The Sentry 5 also has a built-in test circuit to exercise the alarm without adding to any leakage to earth ground. Now that we know what makes up the isolated power system, let's see how it works. In this diagram, we have no bonded connection to earth ground like we had in the conventional power system. Because we don't have a ground connection, we can't call them line and neutral. Rather, we'll call them X1 and X2. Now, since there's no earth ground, there is no path for the current to flow through our 1000 ohm person. On occasion, electrical current crosses X1 or X2 to earth ground through a frayed wire or wires pinched by a cart sitting on them, or through moisture like body fluids or water. Now some current may creep into the system by crossing over to earth ground in a different way. These are called leakage. Depending on how much current is leaking to earth ground will depend on how much current is passing through our 1000 ohm person. As the leakage grows, so does the amount of current increase through our 1000 ohm person and subsequent risk of shock. So hopefully you know the difference between conventional power systems and isolated power systems. You can find our website at isolatedpowerspecialists.com. On behalf of Isolated Power Specialists, 
I wish you good health and a good day.